for using LifeWay's Kit Event Pro. With this incredible tool, you'll be able to manage an unlimited number of events during the year. If you're using Kit Event Lite, you'll have access to all of the same features as Kit Event Pro, but you'll only be able to manage a single event with your subscription. The first thing you'll be asked to do after activating your account is to create your event. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this actually looks like. We'll click Continue to start. All right, the first thing you'll see is your church and event profile. Now the top section deals with information all about your church, and the bottom section of this form deals with information about your event. So if you're managing multiple events, you may not actually have to change anything in your church profile. You'll just be changing the event for each event that you want to manage. So let's fill out the first section first. This again is all about your church. So let's enter our first church here. This is our fake church. And we'll give it an address. Perfect. And we've got a city here. Yes. Here's our state and our zip. Now you'll see a place for URL. Now this is for your church's website, but we'll enter this one here and we'll need to enter a contact. Now this is likely going to be a staff member, so someone who can always be contacted at the church, not somebody like your VBS director or your camp director. That's going to be specific to the event. So let's make sure that we have a staff contact here and we'll need an email address for our contact. Now you see the note here that tells you to make sure to use dashes when you're entering a phone number. If you don't, you'll be asked to put those in before you're allowed to submit your form. Now here's one little thing I want you to, to notice. On mine it says display and find your VBS. On your version it will say display in find your event. If you want your event to show up in LifeWay's Event Finder so that people can search for and find your event, you're going to want to click right here. If you'd rather not, you can simply uncheck the box. We're going to check it for now so that it's accessible to people who want to find our event. Now we're going to scroll down and fill in the information that pertains to our specific event that we're creating. First thing we're going to need is a title. It's already given me a title here, but let's create a more fun one about this awesome event. Now we're going to want to enter a description of our event. How about this is a really awesome event you will not want to miss. It's a good descriptor. Now the contact information has already been filled in for me. This is a first name, last name, and my email address. This information was filled in automatically based on my user ID. However, be sure to change the information to the appropriate contact person for your event. This may be your VBS director or your camp director. So give us a name and an email, and again, remembering to include dashes, we're going to put in a phone number. Now we're using Kit Event Lite, and that's already filled in for us. Now the other thing we'll need to do is to set a registration end date. Now this is totally up to you. You can default to having it set up as the very last day of the year, or if you would rather have it cut off right before your event or on the first day of your event, you can certainly choose to select that date as well. Now I'll scroll down a little further, and this is where we will choose the dates for our event. We'll use the calendar feature to scroll over to the month that we want. Let's say we're going to manage a spring break event. Let's put it here in March in this particular week. We'll make Wednesday be our first day, so we'll click Wednesday, March 19th. You'll see it gives us the date right above it. Now we're going to select a start and end time. Let's say we're going to go from 8 a.m. until noon on this Wednesday. Now all I need to do to get this to show up in my event is to click Add Day. And there you go. You'll see the first day of our event is right there in the box. Now to, now to add a day, you don't need to click Add Day, just come back up to the calendar and select the next day. Decide on your start and your end time. Let's say it's going to be the same time. We'll click Add Day, and Thursday has been added. Now let's add one more day, Friday the 21st. We're going from 8 to noon. We'll say Add a Day. 
Let's just say that I realized Friday is the only day we're ending at noon, but Wednesday and Thursday we're actually going until 5. I can edit that very easily by clicking on the day I want to edit, selecting Edit, changing the time or the day, whichever needs to be changed, and we'll click Save. You'll see it's now updated that information. Let's do the same for Thursday. We'll edit. We'll change our ending time. And we'll click Save. Now you can delete a day the exact same way. Simply click on it and click Delete. Now all you have to do is click Save and you're ready to go. This is your home screen, whether you're using Kit Event Pro or Kit Event Lite. And if you ever want to get back to this page once you're moving around the tool, all you have to do is click the Kit Event Pro logo right here. Now there's a toolbar across the top that will help you navigate through the tool. And if you ever need to go back and change anything about the event, all you have to do is come to the Setup menu, click on Church and Event Info, and you can change any of the information, the title, the date, anything like that. All you need to do is click Save, and you'll be taken right back to the home screen. Now let's go back and create another event using Kit Event Pro, and this time we'll import data from a previous event. Okay, this time I want to create a new event and import data from a previous event. So I want to activate my new Kit Event Pro purchase, and I'm going to select that I want to activate by using a user account, and I want to select, and I'm going to select, I want to activate by using a user account from a previous Kit Event Pro purchase. This means that I'll be able to import data from the last event into my new event. I'm going to click OK and continue. All right, now it's asking me which ID I'd like to use. I'm going to use my user ID and password and click continue. Okay, so let's enter the user ID and the password and click. Congratulations, we've successfully activated a new Kit Event Pro purchase. Thanks. This should look very familiar to you because this is the same setup page as when we created an event using Kit Event Lite. So you'll remember the first section here is about your church information, and this is unlikely to change from the previous event, so I'm going to leave it all as is, and come down to this section that deals specifically with the event. Now here it's asking me to give a new name for my event, so let's call this one Summer Fun. This will be a summertime event. Now we'll need to enter a brief description for our event. This is an event for all kids in my church. And again, we have contact information for this specific event. So this may change. We have a name and an email and a phone number. Again, remembering to include the dashes so that the form will accept it. We're using Kit Event Pro. And we want to select another registration ends date. This time I'm going to use the same one as before. And now we'll scroll down to this same calendar and select some new dates. So since this is a summer event, let's come over to June. And let's say we're going to do an, a week-long event. How about we start with June 9th. And let's do a start time of 9 o'clock. And we will end at 12.30 each day. So now we're ready to add this day. Oops, I forgot to do PM. That's a very important step. Now let's add the day. Here we go. We have our Monday event. Let's come in and add another one on Tuesday. Same thing, 9 to 12.30. Add a day. Wednesday, we'll do the same. Thursday, we'll do the same. And Friday, we'll do the same. Again, I can edit any of these days by clicking on the, on the date first, then clicking Edit, or I can delete it. But I'm fine with this as is, so let's click Save and Continue. The first thing that's going to pop up is a big red notice saying, look here, read this, make sure you understand this before you proceed with importing data from a previous event. If you've ever used LifeWay's VBS Tools Online, or if you've used Kit Event Lite or Kit Event Pro to manage an event in the past, you can choose to import data from that previous event into your new event. Now this can be a huge time saver if you know that the majority of kids and volunteers will likely be the same. And you can always delete data that you don't need after it's been imported. So if you think you might need it, you might as well go ahead and import it. But if you'd rather work from a clean slate, you can choose to not import data and just deal with the fresh data that you enter for your new event. 
One important thing to note is that this is an all or nothing import. You can't pick and choose the data that you want to import. So if you know that up front, that might help you make your decision. Now this notice is going to tell us what kind of information is going to be imported from our previous event. You'll see right here where it says the data that will be imported. Basically what it's telling you is the registered and accepted volunteers from your previous event will be imported. Also the registered participants from your last event will be imported. What it's not going to import are departments, classes, rotations, tracks, that kind of information. Okay, right here there's another important feature that I don't want you to lose. It's a new feature. It's asking you to decide if you want to keep kids in the same grade level when you import them from your previous event, or if you want to automatically roll them up a grade level. Now if your new event and your old event happen during the same school year, you'll probably want to keep kids in the same grade when you import. But if your new event is going to be in the summer or during a new school year, you'll probably want to roll everybody up a grade. If you're importing from an event that happened over a year ago, you probably want to move everyone up a grade level. Does that make sense? We're going to choose to keep participants in the same grade. Now before you click, yes, I've read and understand, and then click continue, I do want to draw your attention to one other issue with importing data. Now once you start creating multiple events with Kid Event Pro, you're going to have multiple events to choose from when you want to import. So it's important that you choose the right event to import from. And what I mean by that is you'll want to pick the one that has the right kind of data for your new event. For example, if you've used Kid Event Pro to manage an event for all kids in your entire church, like say VBS, and then you used it to manage a fall retreat for your preteens, and now you're coming back to create another church-wide event for all kids, make sure when you go to import the data that you choose from the last church-wide event, not the preteen only event. That way you'll be sure to get data for all ages when you import it into your new event. All right, we're ready to import our data. So let's click continue. Now there's gonna be one more step before you're allowed to import data. This is basically just asking you, are you sure one last time? So you can say, yes, I'm ready to import. No, I've changed my mind, I don't wanna do it because I realize that I can't undo it once I've done it. Or I'm not ready to decide. And you can click I'm not ready to decide, but you'll have to make a choice before you move forward with managing your event. So we're ready to import, we'll say yes, and we'll click continue. All right, that takes us right back to the home page. This should look very familiar to you by now. You can always tell which event you're managing by looking right here at the session selector. See, it's very easy to switch back and forth between the events that you have. And if you're ready to create another event, you simply click right here and walk through the process again. So make sure that you're on the event that you want to manage and then you'll find data right here in this window that pertains specifically to the event that you're working on right now. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Feel free to check out the other video tutorials that are available, or you can chat with a live agent or contact LifeWay's online support center for more help.